we're here at DPS Designs in the Forest of Dean, and we're going to be telling you why this company has 10 Herco machines. That's quite a number, isn't it, Sebastian? Yeah, it is quite a few, and it's we've not got there overnight. We've built over a period of time, but since we formed a really strong working relationship with Herco, we've just gone from strength to strength. Well, we're going to take a little tour around their machine shop, but first of all, what is it that you're making here? And it's very exciting. I've never been to a company that does this. Yeah, well, we do a lot in the aerospace and automotive industry, but most people tend to get excited when we say that we make uh, moulds for chocolates. Moulds for chocolates. And we've that's been right. looking at some of those moulds. The history here is that some of you were chocolatiers to Way begin with. Way back when, that's right. Yeah, yeah and I now... mean, uh, it's a bit of a change from uh, making bunnies to make the moulds for bunnies and make the tooling. Yeah. But it's a, you know, it's a good transition when you really understand it. And, and actually having the reliability of the Herco machines has really enabled us to go from strength to strength. Absolutely. And what is it that you desire from your Hercos? What, what is the main thing that you go, this is what Herco does right for us? Um, I think it's consistency. Um, the controls are all the same, really easy to use. Um, you've got great spindle speeds uh, on them and always a great finish off the tools. Um, but really it's about the relationship, the fact that we know them really well, we work in partnership with them. Um, and once you're brought into the system and the logic, um, you kind of want to stay there, you know? Right, okay, let's take a little bit of a tour around. So what machine have you got here and how many of these have you got? So this is 42. Uh, we've got two of these. Uh, we've also got um, three what we call um, 50s. So we've got um, two which we run wet, which are just for aluminium work, one which we work dry. Um, so this is just setting up for an operation uh, at the moment, um, which is about to just do a small modification. Um, and then these are two um, wet machines. This one uh, is dry for doing all of our um, jigs and fixture work particularly for aerospace and automotive. Um, moving around, we have um, our sort of smaller machines. So we've got some 10s, we've got some 30s here. So why do you need such a scope of machine sizes then? What, what, what's important here for you? Well, we do anything from very large press tools for the back of a, a Zuzu pickup truck right down to a tiny chocolate. So, you know, you don't want to be machining something tiny on a big machine, I think you can. Um, and certainly the bigger machines have enabled us to do a lot more in our engineering side of our business. But these smaller machines just beaver away, making little chocolates uh, or, or the, 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 the cores for the moulds like all the time. So and what is it, you know, it's spindle speeds. What are you looking for from different machines as well? Because I know you say surface finish is really important. Yeah, I mean, you. typically we mean machine at about um, 12,000 RPM. Um, you know, ultimately, in time, our next purchase might be to just ramp that right up um, a lot higher to, to get just a, a gleam finish, basically, off the cores that we machine, particularly for injection molding tooling. Um, but in general terms, um, operating about 12,000 for aluminium um, really gives us a great finish at the kind of time, runtime that we need. And I know the control is really important to you. In fact, off camera, this was one of the first things that you mentioned, is the fact that you've got the same control on all of the machines and that works so well for you and your team. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the Winmax control is very user friendly, um, easy to use conversationally if we do need to do programming on the machine. Of course, the majority of what we do is programmed offline and sent to the machine, but it just enables us to any operator to jump on any machine and straight away know what they're doing. And that just makes a, a huge difference. What have Herco done for you? Because I know the installation, I mean, you've had an extension on the side of the building to get this machine That's in. Right. So well, have they held your hand along the way? Yeah, they do. Um, you know, they, well, as far as installation's concerned, there's a lot of scoping that has to go on in advance. Um, the movers are, are highly experienced. Um, I think it was Russell's who worked with us on this one. You know, they do a, a site visit. This would, that's had to be scoped to the nearest you know, 10 mil, it was really tight. And just to have that confidence that it was gonna swing around, slot into place, um, made, a, made a big difference to us, yeah. So why would you go for another Herco? Because of course, if you did go for another machine, I know it's gonna be a Herco. So what is it that they're doing right all the time for you? Um, well, I mean, their quality hasn't diminished over time. Uh, they've kept the quality, um, which is really important to us because it's easy to cut corners as material prices go up or whatever it is. They offer um, good value. They've got, importantly, the type of bed sizes that we like to work with, the ones that, um, that 
her coke and supply. So this is quite a square bed format, mm -hmm. which works for um, the type of tools that we do. If you look at um, tools that have got, or machines I should say, that have got 1600 in the Y, quite often they might be like four meters in the X, which we don't, it's the wrong, it's the wrong sort of size for us. Yes. So actually that, that was really important, especially with the purchasing of this machine. But it's the relationship, the, we, the fact that they are good value and that we know that we can have a sensible conversation with them on price. Um, and the machine, you know, kind of turns up when when, it's, when they say it's going to. So just for the last question, really, what machines have you got? Are they all three axes or what's yeah, the next level? Yeah, they're all level? three axes. Um, we've got one with a, with a sort of trunnion, but um, the next level for us, every time we talk about five axis, we end up buying a bigger three axis machine. Okay. Because in, in, in mold making, you need to have draft angle, which is something which you would typically do three axis. So um, we are, every time we're on the brink of saying, no, let's go five axis, yes. we end up just doing something else three axis because it just makes sense for the majority of our workload. So the next thing we'd be doing is either, well, if we need to get a new machine, we need to get a new building because uh, we've maxed out on our space. Um, so it would probably be to go for a high speed machining center. It's the next thing we do. So you're happy then? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, uh, we can't ask for an awful lot more. Um, the quality is there, the service is there. They're always supportive in trying to help us to make the right choice of machine and they're not just trying to sell us down the river with, uh, with you know, their next best gleaming thing. Um, so yeah, we're happy.